Welcome to the first episode of the JA Malta podcast. Uh, in this series, we'll be talking about work readiness. So what does one need to do, prepare or uh, research when looking for their first job? Today, I have Elaine and Darren with me, and we will be discussing the first essentials of what documentation do I need or where do I start to look for a job? Then in subsequent episodes, we'll be talking about different topics such as the contracts, interviews, CVs, covering letter and much more. So to start off with today, um, I'd like to ask our guests to actually introduce themselves. So Elaine, would you like to start introducing yourself? Sure. Thank you very much. Really glad to be here. Uh, my name is Elaine Dutton. I'm a psychologist by background, but I've worked for the last 12 years plus in HR. Um, I now run my own consultancy, it's called The Change Agent, and I basically do HR consultancy, coaching as well, especially to new leaders, um, and uh, in the end, I'm, I'm really interested to be here and discuss this topic. Thank you. Thank you. Darren? Hello, it's nice to be here. I'm Darren Muscat. I come from Jobs Plus. Um, uh, my studies uh, specialize in occupational guidance and career counseling. Um, I've been working with Jospers for the last 27 years and uh, the last 15 years in a, in a job center. So um, uh, practically our role is to help people find their desired jobs, career paths. Okay, so perfect. that's so what we do. The perfect uh, person to start asking these questions. And as mentioned, today we'll be discussing on the first part of the job search. So um, starting off. And then we will be giving suggestions, tips on how one can search for a job and also what to do. Because uh, we know that some people might be confused as to what to look for when they're looking for their first job. But before that, I just wanted to ask you some uh, quick questions, uh, a quick fire round, um, where your answer can be a one word answer, yes or no, to, to some questions just to break the ice. So. Would you prefer working in the private sector or public sector? Private. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> I have to choose though. <laughs> Both are interesting for me. So when, uh, when preparing a CV, do you focus more on the education or on the work experience? Experience. Experience. In terms of um, receiving salaries, therefore, um, would you prefer the traditional bank account or a new digital fintech app for your bank? It makes no difference, to be honest. But traditional bank account, let's say. I've got a, I've got a loan to pay. <laughs> <laughs> traditional app for me as well. And would you look for job security or growth opportunities? For me, growth. Job security and for me as well. It's important as well. Would you uh, go for a job which uh, is behind the desk or out and about? Well, I've made my choice at this point. It's out <laughs> and about for sure. Uh, my role is on the desk, uh, but I enjoy it as well. Okay. Excellent. And the last question from uh, this round, uh, when going for an interview uh, for that um, kick, would you prefer tea or coffee? <laughs> coffee, coffee, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, for that uh, quick uh, fire round. Uh, let's start with uh, you, Darren. So we're looking at um, this episode where we're starting to look for a job. So who can actually work? What are the criteria for me to be able to work? Um, to start working, um, uh, you have to be um, 16 years of age and over. Although sometimes they do school exemptions for minors, okay? Um, uh, but mainly over 16 years of age. Um, most of the time, um, uh, when people start at that age, they might lack academic background and we encourage them to continue their studies most of the time. So that's where we start off, to mm -hmm. see what, what they want to do. And, ma and, and what we do, we tell them, look, experience different kind of jobs. Okay, to see what you like and what you dislike. 
okay? Mm -hmm. We do also career tests, okay? okay? Especially we do so for uh, new job seekers and uh, people that want a career change, okay? okay? There might be people that have been working in the same role for years and uh, they just want to change um, okay. uh, um, for various issues, for various reasons. Um, uh, and we do those career tests that help out a lot. So um, someone who's starting off can come to you for yes, this career test? Yes, okay. and uh, it calculates a lot of things like aptitudes, what uh, their, their likes, dislikes, if they prefer outdoors or indoors, for example. Um, uh, so that's what, what uh, we do to help out, um, uh, for, uh, to, to, to encourage people to, to see what they like doing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the job is, is not just a job, it's something that you should enjoy doing. Okay, so that's what we aim for. Yeah. Okay. And in, in fact, uh, linking on to this, uh, Elaine, when uh, someone is starting off their career, um, they might have studied towards one aim, uh, one job type, uh, but now they're unsure. How, how can they link their job with their char character, like, uh, like we just heard now, or uh, to their likes? W what can they do? First of all, I think it's important to mention that it's not, it's, it's not a tragedy, right? If you've studied something and then realize that perhaps what you've studied is not actually the, the, maybe the career uh, that you want to do. Uh, sometimes people tell me, look, I chose maybe when I was way too young, I wasn't really sure then, or maybe people choose um, a topic at, at, at school because maybe the parents are in that field. Uh, maybe sometimes parents push a little bit as well and sort of then they find themselves a little bit perhaps out of depth. Um, it's okay to change your mind. Um, you can also, you can obviously see what, what still that, 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 that path offered you, okay? So nothing is lost. You can still take something from it. You can, as, as Deron was always mentioning, see also what fits you and what fits your character. And perhaps in the beginning, especially if you're still very early on in your career, experiment a little bit. Yes, um, go for perhaps intern internships, for example. Maybe take, maybe take voluntary roles in certain organizations. Maybe test out how certain roles might fit you. So it's okay if you're not yet sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it, it, it is OK to change your mind. I think it's a bit gone now, the time where you go into a role and it's a job for life uh, uh, idea. Right. So with people, people actually nowadays maybe change careers in their lifetime. So especially if you're early on in your career, it's OK to um, test out what you're feeling, test out a, um, a role ask for internships, contact companies where you think you could be a fit even as a junior employee and try out your, um, your, your that, that um, roles in that manner. Okay. And at, at Jobs Plus, or uh, what are the resources? Do you think st students or new joiners in the workforce can look for? You mentioned the career test. What are the resources can they so uh, seek out? We help people um, uh, do a proper CV, a proper covering letter. We um, uh, offer job seeking advice, okay? Um, uh, and anything, anything related to any the job searching activities of an individual, we are there to help. Um, uh, sometimes they uh, go for interviews and they are not well prepared, prepared for it. So this is on one-to-one -one basis or content we cater, online? We, we cater on one-to-one -one basis. Okay, obviously you can find a lot of information online, anything you can find online. Even if you are looking for a job, you just- Specific vacancies, you Yes, mean? you can yes. just uh, state the position, for example, salesperson jobs, Malta, and you will find all the vacancies um, on top of the list of the search engine and uh, you can apply accordingly. Apart from information, are there any particular schemes that are, where, are helping people looking for their first job or moving into their first job? Or is it more on the employer's side in that case? With regards to employability scheme, maybe a training schemes? Training. Um, uh, oh, okay. With regards to training schemes, um, uh, we usually have training schemes, but um, uh, at this moment in time, we are in a transition period. We are um, reapplying for for the schemes, but we we had a lot of schemes um, like like um, uh, training pay schemes, for example, um, uh, which subsidizes courses. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, we ha we offer free courses ourselves. Okay, we have a lot of well. free courses okay. in any area: trades, um, uh, digital 
uh, Excellent. and so on and so forth. Um, uh, we offer also um, online courses, so they don't have to. People don't have to uh, travel um, uh, to Hull far and back like we used to do uh, years ago. Um, uh, and uh, we we had uh, um, uh, work exposure schemes. We had uh, um, uh, wage subsidy schemes, tax incentive schemes. Okay. All par, uh, partially funded. By and this. and who would be eligible to this? As we said, anyone over sixteen, resident in Malta, or uh, other um, anyone who's eligible to work can benefit from Jobs Plus, right? And yes, yes, and anyone can benefit from our schemes. Okay. And um, obviously, um, people have to be sixteen years and over. And do they need to prepare any particular documentation, like getting an N9 number or a text number? Um, what are the preparations do they need to embark on? Look, uh, when, the, when the people start, have to start their first job, um, uh, they have to consider that they have to have a national insurance number that nowadays is the same ID number. So the NI number, the national insurance number is the same as your ID? Yes. It's the so same it's automatically? Number. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, it's not like we, we used to have years ago. Um, uh, we, we had a, a different a national insurance number and uh, an ID number. Nowadays, it's the same number. So they don't need to apply for it? It's there, it's automatically Yes, either. even the okay. text number is the ID. So is it the, it's the same number? The same, same. Excellent. Okay. okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks for clarifying that because I know some questions come on, on that point. Um, just to give a, a bit of a, a break in the, in the discussion, I just wanted to ask you, um, maybe share a bit of a personal experience on your first job search, uh, searching or actually your first job. Anything uh, you could share on that experience on how it felt or what did you do or anything funny that happened at that time? that now uh, seems funny as opposed to that at that time. Well, it, it, to be fair, now at this point, it's been quite a while since I had my first job, let's, let's say that. Um, at the time, it was very normal to, to, to work in hospitality, right, as your first job. Um, so, so, the, so, so basically, when I was about 16, I was working in a five-star hotel. I started working as a waitress. Uh, I wasn't really well cut out for the job. I have two left feet and two right arms. Um, dropped a couple of things way too many times. And then actually the, the hotel the hotel management approached me and said, look, I mean, you've got a, f a couple of languages. I mean, you're clearly okay with people. Would you like a job in reception, you know, like in front office? And to be fair, there I, I, was, I was exactly, yeah. I was carrying f way, way less things, you know, I broke, broke, didn't, didn't have to break, um, break, break things. And actually I spent three and a half years um, working in front office of a five-star hotel for whilst I, actually whilst I was at university. Um, unexpectedly. You... Unexpectedly, I really enjoyed the role. And to be fair, there are still certain things nowadays where I think when I meet people, for example, I, mean, I, I now work with consultants, right? So I meet people all the time. I meet clients all the time. I think the client ethic that I got on my first job um, in reality is still with me, right? So even though, and it was, I mean, something funny, for example, one of the things that I think then at that at some point really, really made them decide, look, I mean, Miss Kina, she's not really cut out for, 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 for the waitressing job. I went to open a bottle of wine. It was a very, very expensive bottle of wine. It was a Beaujolais Francais, I remember still. Something like at the time, like something like 26 Maltese Lira, you know, like so it cost a lot of money. Um, and instead of pulling out the cork, I actually pushed the cork inside and I broke the cork. So obviously this wine was completely wasted, right? So these are some of the things that I remember from, from, that, from that experience. Yeah. All, all learning experiences. All learning. It's what, but you learn how to apologize. You learn how to obviously deal with a mishap. You learn how to deal with a mistake at the end of the day, right? Um, to replace the wine, to be courteous and to say, look, I apologize. I've done a mistake. So even first experiences, hard as they may be, can be very worthwhile as you take them of all course, forward. Of course. Darren, anything to share? It's the same for me. I, I worked uh, as a summer job. It was my first experience. Um, uh, I worked in, in the, as a kitchen helper, peeling potatoes. So this was my, <laughs> mainly my, my job. And you also serve food because the kitchen helper used to serve food as well um, uh, in the evening before dinner. Excellent. And uh, we've had about 500 guests. Mm, so, so the pressure was on, was uh, you know, you can time. handle pressure. Yes, yes. Um, uh, so that was Excellent. what I did. Thanks, uh, thanks for sharing that. And in fact, uh, Elaine, just wanted to come back to you on, on the points you mentioned, sort of these um, issues of 
what is my first job is is my first job going to be a, a lifetime job so w- what challenges or sort of uh, misconceptions do you see people nowadays uh, when they're looking for a job um, sort of get confused on or challenges that they find that you could maybe shed some light on mm. I, I think I think perhaps wanting to to mention and perhaps Darren can also add to this it, the, the, it is a reality at the moment it is, it is a job seekers market right so no skill will go wasted at this point if there is a role that you would like to push yourself for or that you feel you could even learn to do um, a lot of companies are offering opportunities for people to come in and train um, so if you're looking from you know from the manufacturing side and pharma companies um, to you know compli- junior compliance roles or roles in financial services um, if you've even got you know the very basics in accounting for example firms are taking up people at an even more junior level for example so I don't think there is anything that should stop anyone from really pursuing that first step because at the moment the market is favoring the job seeker mm-hmm. right so literally no no skill or knowledge will go to waste will this experimentation of going to a job and maybe changing uh, uh, affect the the fact that the cv uh, looks like you're hopping from one job to the other or how, how would you juggle finding the balance there Fair point. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you my answer sort of from, from an HR point of view, right? So when I used to look at CVs, if I'm seeing someone who is still quite young in their career, I'm not going to mind that perhaps they had two different types of summer jobs, right? Um, it is understood that people, especially when you're still young, you're still finding your feet and understanding where actually uh, you find yourself to be, you know, to find yourself to be strongest in. I think as long as you can explain the hopping, Right. Mm -hmm. So if I get the sense as an HR person that someone is just hopping around, moving around because they just offered you a little bit more salary, it doesn't really look good on your character. So you do have to ultimately explain, perhaps say, look, it was a definite job of only three months. I knew it was going to end and then I needed to look for something else. Or I tried it out. It wasn't really well um, cut out for me. I needed to move on. Mm-hmm. So have ultimately something to back up why you've moved on, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, if you're just hopping on for the sake of it, it's obviously going to look not, not going to look great. But neither are people just looking for people who are only only staying in one place at one time. That, mm-hmm. is, that doesn't work. And in another episode uh, on this series, we will be discussing um, uh, voluntary work, uh, extracurriculum activities. But I just wanted to also get your opinion of uh, both of you there. Um, when people are applying for the first job and they have lack of experience, obviously, um, are the things I just mentioned an option? Should they uh, strive to try these things? Are, are, are employers looking out for these things as well um, to, to beef up a bit, to improve on your CV? Is it something that is also recognized in this case? I think it does depend a lot on the sector. So if you're going to go working, for example, in the social work, for example, psychology sector, um, then probably having done some voluntary work or say, for example, in schools, etc., probably some voluntary work would actually look very, very good on your CV. Mm-hmm. In the private sector, it's not going to be a must. However, any experience is good experience to have. So any voluntary experience will have given you something, time management, perhaps project management, that will bring skills that the person can look at and say, ah, okay, this person was given that responsibility and that level of trust. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you've done the experience, it might not be a must, but if you've done it, definitely showcase it, right? On your CV and also your LinkedIn profile. I mean, nowadays, it's not just about the CV that you give, you know, in paper form, but it's also the profile you build online. So any experiences you do, in my opinion, definitely put them there and showcase them. Excellent. We'll, uh, we'll yeah. come back to this point. Yeah, but then continue with the subject. Sure, right sure. Um, with regards to soft skills, which is very important, extracurricular activities are very, very important. Mm-hmm. And it's not just, um, uh, just for the sake of doing extra cor- extracurricular activities, because... Sometimes, um, uh, we try, for example, you do volunteer work. And uh, what you gained from that volunteer work, that might interest, that obviously should interest employers. Leadership skills, mm-hmm. time management. Yeah. Okay. The responsibility, the responsibility of uh, handling uh, certain okay. tasks. Um, uh, teamwork. Okay. Those are skills that employers 
search for. And through those extracurricular activities, that, that means uh, something. That means um, uh, what kind of person you are, mm -hmm. what kind of uh, interests you have. Okay? Excellent. And uh, that's, that's is all, always a plus. That's always mm -hmm. something extra, especially for new job seekers mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. don't have experience. Any, okay. any other advice, Elaine, that you mentioned the LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. any other advice you would give to people who are looking for their first job or just about uh, their first job? I would say also get a bit in touch with yourself, right? And think a little bit how you're going to introduce yourself even to a new employer. Um, it, it takes a while to get used to, right? So if you haven't done that many interviews, it's worth perhaps even just rehearsing. I know it sounds a little bit tough, but even rehearsing in front of a mirror or asking a family member to ask you some questions. Prepare yourself with very basic questions that they will obviously ask you. Who you are? What do you do? How do you spend your free time? It's a bit, it's, it's a bit sad, you know, that I would have someone in front of me. I ask, okay, so what do you do in your free time? And people just shrug their shoulders and say, no time with friends or watching TV. I'm not saying it's bad to say that, but again, you're selling yourself, right? You want people to pick you over other people. So find things in your life that you are currently doing and that, as, as Darren was mentioning as well, that ultimately highlight what you could offer. If you do sports, if you play football, then that's teamwork skills, as, as, as Darren was mentioning. It means that you are committed to something. You show up regularly mm -hmm. with your mates, even if you're playing um, a game of football. So always think, what are the elements in my life that ultimately I can put forward and showcase as my personal brand? But you have to think a little bit about it. You don't just thinking about you don't start thinking about it when you're in the waiting area before you're called into the interview. Okay, so think about it before and start prepping a little bit how you're going to sell yourself. Excellent. Thanks. Um, moving on now to a, a different dimension in terms of international jobs. So uh, people trying to gain experience also abroad. Are there any specific services that Jobs Plus offers on, on, on that front? Yes, um, uh, we have uh, the EURES section. Um, uh, EURES is uh, a European, European Union um, uh, employment agency. Okay, it covers a group of uh, um, uh, state employment agency from all over Europe, um, uh, and uh, they share information like jobs, okay, um, uh, vacancy adverts. Um, uh, they also. Um, uh, help people to integrate okay. in their country like um, uh, they give information about standard of living living and working conditions um, uh, in the country and uh, it's the same issue with the schemes um, uh, uh, right now and uh, in fact there, there used to be schemes like um, helping people to relocate okay like um, uh, uh, spending money lodging um, uh, mm -hmm. free courses, learning the native language of the country concerned. Um, uh, and uh, obviously we are, uh, the European Union is still in process to... Um, uh, so again, in terms of being eligible to go work within the EU, it's, uh, it's a matter of just going, to be honest, right? There's, is there any documentation again that I need to think about if I'm uh, working abroad? Everything will be explained. Um, uh, so let's say I want to work as a butcher for example and uh, it's something that is quite requested in a certain country mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. because there are shortages in that area agreed so um uh, the u.s advisor um uh, pinpoints that area okay that country and say uh, to the job seeker are you interested to work there there are shortages in in the in the job you're looking for and uh, obviously they explain to him the working and living conditions there and if he, if he uh, accepts he can go there and work there excellent okay and in fact i had a client that just went to belgium working there because there were shortages in his area of expertise okay and uh, elaine in terms of again selling yourself as you said to to employers um how would you talk about or, or maybe what suggestions would you give to anyone who's looking to work abroad and I'll link that uh, question with a second part uh, so that we can also uh, r r wrap up the area of selling yours, yourself to the employer when it comes to the CV and covering letter 
any specific tips, uh, tricks that you could give also for that, because they are two important documents. For sure. I would say that if you're, if you're looking to work abroad, you definitely have to showcase a flexible mindset, right? Um, you have to show that ultimately you are willing to adapt perhaps to different um, ways of, um, of, of living. Uh, there I mentioned the language, but not just, right? So um, accommodating a little bit, uh, right? The, the, the way that it's going to work over there. If you're going to go with a rigid mindset that has to work exactly how you're used to doing things over here, then that won't work, mm -hmm. right? Uh, people also want to ultimately see that there's a level of stability that you, tell, that you plan to give ultimately your utmost whilst, whilst you are working abroad. And it could also be the case that some companies are based both locally and in another country as well. So you do have in Malta a number of um, international uh, organizations set up over here. So that could be a very interesting link as well. If you're looking at CV and, and, and cover letter, again, um, keep it tidy, right? But at the same time, focus on the things which are very important. Sometimes people crowd them with perhaps too many details, I don't know, lists of O-levels, for example, when you already have your A-levels or maybe even a degree, for example, or another diploma. So does it really matter to list everything down? Sometimes I would say go more concise because sometimes the people who are looking at your CV might not have the time to actually look at all those pages, right? So keep it punchy and keep it reflecting your area. I would say there's a difference between someone who is looking for a job as a salesperson, someone who's a designer. I would definitely expect to see something more visually appealing if you're coming in for the job of a designer, for example. So I guess the CV has to reflect, again, your brand, who you are. So do be careful how you're going to choose your layout. Perhaps in the beginning you might want to use something very simple, um, something that, you know, that, 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 that can help you have a template. But then as you go, as you move on in your career, I would not expect to see the CV of someone, for example, even if you're changing careers, if you're in your 30s and your 40s, I wouldn't expect you to still have a CV as you had when you were 16 years old, right? So some things can be edited, keep it concise, keeping reflective of what you can offer for that specific job. And one last thing, do change the CV each time you're applying for a different position. Tailor your CV, right? Don't just say, ah, yes, I have a CV. I used it to apply for job XYZ, but now it will equally be okay for ABC. You might need to prioritize certain educational components in your life, or maybe how you highlight certain experiences you've had in one job and not another. Yeah. Always tailor your CV for the role you're applying for. I see there in nodding, uh, nodding yeah. away to this. Yes, and I think um, uh, um, uh, I've seen a lot of CVs that needs to be updated, amended. Mm. Um, uh, unemployed job seeker having a CV stating that they are still working. Um, uh, so um, uh, we, we have to, we need to um, uh, explain things all the time. Excellent. And uh, obviously um, uh, the covering letter, the covering letter is very, very, very important. Excellent. Okay. Um, uh, in fact, uh, with regards to the CV, um, uh, employment is better that should reflect the last 15, maybe 10 years if uh, um, uh, you have a long list of work experience. Um, uh, you have to take care to explain um, uh, some job voids, okay? Some years that you... you the gaps between... Yes, uh, yes, gaps yeah. and, and between employment. Um, uh, things can happen, so you have to explain those as well. Make sure to explain those um, uh, during interviews, okay? Um, uh, with regards to the covering letter, pinpoint the highlight on the covering letter. The highlights is very important, especially the four main things that um, uh, um, uh, will help the HR, okay? Say, look, this should, could be the, the main person. Yep. Let's look at the CV then. It's okay. kind of, um, the covering letter is like an appetizer for the main course. Okay, agreed. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> and, and uh, linking back to what Elaine was saying, the personalization and the mm -hmm. tailor, Mm -hmm. uh, tailoring the covering letter to the job you're yes. applying for. And the employers appreciate a lot um, that you put an effort um, mm -hmm. uh, to tailor me your okay. covering letter for the post you're applying uh, for. Excellent. Yeah, uh, thank you for that, uh, Darren and Elaine. I think uh, I think this episode highlighted, if I had to kind of point out two uh, key takeaways, would be the 
personality. You need to highlight your personality and think what you would like to do and seek out also opportunities that uh, gives you skill apart from uh, purely educational and also the personalization. So really uh, bring out your personality, uh, your, uh, your opinion, your uh, flair uh, when it comes to seeking out new job opportunities. So I, I thank you, uh, Elaine, thank you. Darren, for being here. I'll take this opportunity to thank Jobs Plus as well, uh, a long-standing partner of JA Malta, as well as the VOPS scheme and uh, the Malta Council for the Voluntary Sector, as well as the Ministry for Inclusion, Voluntary Organizations and Consumer Rights, who are also uh, supporting us on, uh, on this uh, first t uh, podcast series that we're doing. So I thank you all, uh, the listeners and viewers, of the podcast. I'll ask you to follow us and uh, follow what we do on our social media. Send us any comments, suggestions, and also see what other information we will be posting uh, on our website and social media. And as we mentioned as well during the episode, the next episode will be discussing uh, things related to your CV and covering letter which we touched upon uh, now at the end, but we'll be uh, giving you more details as to how and when you should be preparing these. So thank you for joining and see you next time.